Todd Valley, Brian Todd. Uh, joining me here, Welland County Speedway, Flat Track Canada, round one, and uh, heat race action going on earlier, Brian. It's been absolutely fantastic. 51 years racing at this track here in Welland, and it never fails to disappoint. Man, this place is legendary. They've brought in a whole bunch of clay last summer and just resurfaced this place. It is just awesome. A uh, five to seven degree bank here in the turns, Todd. An absolute glorious crowd. Threats of rain throughout the day. The uh, weather gods have been with us. The sun has been out now. A bit of cloud just to keep that track just meant for tonight. And man, some of the pro racing we've had in the heat races earlier tonight. Fans, you are in for a treat. I'm telling you, Todd, it has been amazing. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned the clay. 270 loads of clay they brought in. Apparently they're building a new athletic complex at Brock University. And they had all this extra dirt and they just brought it in up here. You mentioned the, the, the banking. We saw Hunter Bauer earlier uh, up by the bales, pretty well tapping while well, the bottle bags, I guess most of them are now. And uh, never, never in years before would we see riders riding up there. I know what happened a few weeks ago again, but it's pretty cool to see. Hunter was in the lead at that time. He had the, the advantage. He knew he could try something different. And uh, I don't think it slowed him down one bit. It was just awesome to wa watch him going around that outside, just grazing those bottle bags and maintaining a good lead. He got that lead on the main blue groove. Once he established a lead, he, as a true champion, started sourcing out different lines for the main event. And he was just poetry in motion out on that outside. And what's, what struck me was in all the, uh, there was the first pro heat. In the other two pro heats, we didn't see a single rider emulate that line they, they didn't try that line we did see doug lawrence here earlier kind of studying uh, the intermediate riders and stuff i think he was more worried about the start but you're right nobody else tried that line hunter did that may pay off later on for him it's uh it's cool we got one of our little guys taking the uh, checkered flag right now that's caleb hunt who's taking that for a spin but uh yeah good crowd here tonight it's uh you talked about the incredible heat races in the expert class uh, the heat racing has been awesome in all the classes, uh, novice, intermediate, these little guys, are, there's a whole gaggle of 50s coming out here now, and that's uh, really cool to see. Future stars of the sport right there, and uh, you know, these young riders coming from racing families, just growing up in the pits, and all the experience coming in from family members, uncles, brothers, sisters, and it's just so great to see the sport healthy and, and getting so much grassroots attention and support here in Canada and down south in the U.S. Just the oldest form of motorcycle racing in North America starting to get back to its uh, former glory. We can see a bit of the open expert uh, points back on, on the board from 2019 when we last raced just to see you know how they all stacked up and some of these athletes a lot of these athletes there on screen will be racing here tonight. Um, so we are in for a treat ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us live here on uh, FS1 and uh, the fans here are just awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of this uh, inaugural, you know, Welland event this year uh, at this level. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, of course, uh, the state of the world in 2020, we weren't able to have any national events, but uh, this season we're back at it, uh, thank God. And uh, tonight has not disappointed so far at all. You know, we had quite a bit of wind earlier, it's just, calmly died down into the evening time and uh, it's just becoming a, a perfect conditions for flat track racing it's you know hovering around you know, 20 odd 21 celsius around 70 low 70s fahrenheit uh, so the track able to hold up well uh, most of the crowd still in t-shirts uh, with that wind dying down it's just getting to be just a, a beautiful evening here at welland county speedway Vendors are all in place, and uh, you know, way Todd, nothing like coming to the track and a little track food, a little ambiance here, and the like-minded fans, a ton of motorcycles in the uh, in the parking area. They've got to get parking way in the other side of the field across the road, Todd. It's been years since I've seen cars up over there, so very, very strong turnout. Uh, it's, it's just a wonderful thing to see. Well, you talk about the uh, the talent level we have here tonight. And uh, other than our 2016 champ, Steve Beatty, all of our former Flat Track Canada national champions are here tonight, as well as some former CMA champions. The, the, the pro field is just littered with talent. 
And that's uh, Chris Evans and the gang. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining you. We're going for a quick commercial break. We'll see you back here in a flash. So back at uh, Welland County Speedway, we're just going to put a drop of moisture on the track, Brian. And then I think we're going to be into our open expert heats. We've seen the experts already in the uh, DCX class. Of course, in the open class, they can choose to either ride the DTX machine, uh, motocross-based machine, or we can go to the custom uh, framer. Uh, it's interesting to see what they're going to use. The track looks uh, fairly smooth. You pointed out a little bit of a spot in turn four there where uh, it's breaking up just a little bit. But, uh, yeah, the fans are in for a treat here tonight. Yeah, you, you've got that right, Todd. I, I love the watering truck here. It's just a nice little shower onto the track here. They're not overdoing it. This is just going to seat in nice. And with this wind dying down, the cloud cover, sun going down, oh, my. We are just going to have a, a very racy racetrack here. They, they've really put some moisture on that outside cushion where we saw Bauer just destroy the, the everybody. Line. Yeah, yes. that, that's going to be just awesome to see if he can parlay that into something uh, in that main event, Todd. Uh, we saw Bauer just out there, and, and you know, he is on a borrowed bike, and it's not even a bike that he really thought was going to be uh, in the hunt for the win, and just to see the skills of that rider parlay that motorcycle into that heat race win. Uh, we're going to have to watch the number 24, but we saw uh, Chris Evans challenge in the Doug Lawrence there for the for the win, and uh, Lawrence took it, and uh, and then we saw the number one, Dustin Brown, out on track, looking good. He had to settle for third in that E race. That's 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 hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, you mentioned Bauer, of course. He's been taking part in the American Flat Track Series on the uh, NKR Canada Waters Auto Body Team. Of course, NKR NKR Nikki Kendall Racing. Nikki's from uh, out in the Vancouver area. Awesome on Nikki to uh, to start a team like that. She, she contacted me last year. She had a bunch of questions. She was uh, looking to, uh, you know, she, she was up to something. She didn't quite tell me what. And then all of a sudden I see the announcement that the 100 Bauer is going American Flat Track Racing. And uh, I, I've been following it uh, quite well uh, and, and talking to him quite a bit and his mom, Krista, quite a bit. And he, he's pretty jacked about how the season's going. He's had some unfortunate uh, engine malfunctions but uh, the kids putting Canada back on the map Dustin Brown you mentioned was down there as well and then we've got Trent Pickle uh, one of our uh, expert riders he, he's gone a totally different route he's actually moved down to the US for the summer to avoid that border crossing and uh, Trent's getting a little frustrated I think but I, I want him to if he's listening to this I want him to keep his head up because he is racing against the best of the best and Trent don't worry man you're doing us proud doesn't matter how you do out there. Yeah, you get down the U.S. and, uh, you know, you just can't help but elevate your game. I mean, it's just an awesome scene down there. And, you know, young rider just uh, absorb everything each weekend and every time out there. He can't help but get better. And then we saw the veteran Don Taylor. He took the win in that other heat race. Uh, so looking very racy. And that pass, he went from fourth to first yeah. with, uh, with a pretty heavy field of fast guys. So uh, Taylor on that Yamaha, the number nine, <laughs> He's going to be a fly in the ointment out there for these young guns as well as, you know, the 15 of Chris Evans, you know, in his mid-50s, just riding like a like a high schooler out there and has not <laughs> lost the enthusiasm. And no. he is, uh, you know, he is every bit a hard charger as he's ever been uh, and a multi-year Canadian Hall of Famer. Uh, so lots of talent out here and lots of Hall of Famers on this racetrack tonight. Well, it's funny. I try and talk to these guys as much as I can. And Evans told me a couple years ago that he will keep doing this as long as he's having fun. Judging by how he looks tonight, he, he's still having fun. He's still pulling that, that helmet off with a smile on his face. Donnie Taylor, I talked to him. He kind of went into semi-retirement a couple years ago. And uh, he, he all of a sudden is back this year. He, he's, he's got his own business. He's got a young family. He's got a couple of boys. So I think he took a step back for a bit. That happens. I asked him today what the plan is. He said, well, I'm, I'm not racing this year. And uh, I kind of <laughs> smiled and he said, no, I'm going to throw my uh, throw my leg over that seat tonight if I have fun and I uh, I want to come back next time. That's what I'm going to do. And if I don't, I don't. And that, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that approach. And I have a funny feeling uh, by the time the night's over, Don, he's going to have that bug again. Well, the, f the thing is, you know, that attitude somewhat takes the pressure off yourself. You know, so you're not coming out here with, with the whole weight of the world on your shoulders. You just come in with that attitude, and then you're relaxed, 
relaxed rider equals results. You see the riders that are, you know, really uptight and, and usually they don't have the results they want. You know, the riders that are, you find coming on the start a little more relaxed, a little more jovial, bam, they get that whole shot and they get into the winner's circle. Yeah, and Donnie Taylor, uh, not there yet, but a guaranteed future Hall of Famer. Um, there's there's kind of kind of strict rules for to get into that Hall of Fame, um, but obviously he will be in there as soon as he uh, he has what, what it takes to get there, as far as meeting the criteria. Chris Evans is out here riding; he's already in there. We got John Kehoe in that vet class; he's already in the Hall of Fame. We've got Hall of Famers working in the pits. It's really a pretty talented group of uh, riders, mechanics. Just, just everything we have in this series. And Todd, kudos to Flat Track Canada for just delivering uh, on the goods here, providing a platform for these athletes to showcase their talents and their sponsors. And this Welland County Speedway, uh, you know, that smaller dirt track, the real essence of the sport. And then we move into some of those half five, eight mile uh, uh, full horse race facilities where these guys can get going up over a hundred miles an hour into turn one. Uh, it's just an epic spectacle, and the facilities at some of those uh, tracks are just first class, uh, both in the bars, the restaurants, the seating, the air conditioning for the fans, uh, and you just get a, a whole gaggle of, of wicked motorcycles in the parking lot and enthusiasts, and what I love about this sport is this the racing just goes bam, bam, bam. They're set up, they're gone, they're in staging. The races just go one after the other. The fans get to see the entire track from one vantage point. It, it's just glorious to see flat track racing getting back to where it was in the early days of uh, motorcycle racing in North America. Yeah, and as we saw that 50 class come out where there's like 10, 12 of them out there, that, that only speaks great things for the future of the sport. And again, that kind of seems to go in cycles, right? But if even half of those riders are racing a few years from now, that's fantastic. And just a few stats on this Welland Club, uh, if I can quickly say, this Welland Motorcycle Club is celebrating its 75 our 75th year as a motorcycle club and this is the uh, 51st year of racing at this facility so there has been a lot of uh, past glory um, i can remember back in the day they would have uh, the top open expert guy race against the top speedway guy in a little bit of a challenge match i believe there's been bikes who have raced against horses out here but I, i'm not positive on that one but the lots of history in this track you got that right todd it's uh it's it's just fantastic to be a part of it here and uh <laughs> you know big fan of the sport from from way way back before being involved with it just you know going down to daytona every year and the old the old uh the old dirt track there and just it was a highlight of of our event you know race a lot of motocross be down there training every year try and catch the first u.s national back in gatorback and uh and then going to the daytona supercross you know and that the whole scene uh back there and uh, memorial park and uh, just is awesome and going to places like Syracuse and uh, to see the mile and the big the big open bikes um, You know just a real cool sport and it just brings the essence of motorcycle racing uh, to the forefront And you know when these these athletes can go good on this track. They're usually pretty darn handy road racers as well Absolutely, and I think we're just gonna go to another quick commercial break Brian And welcome back, race fans. We have got our first heat here of uh, the evening here. The open expert class is on the line. We've got some good talent here. The 22 local rider of Tyler Seguin. We've got Hunter Bauer, the 24 on the outside. Uh, Clayton Isherwood on the number 39. The number 15, that is Chris Evans, Hall of Famer. And uh, Ryder's doing some hot laps here after the watering just to kind of get the track work in a bit. So Seguin's got a brand new bike for this year, that uh, 22 Honda. And that is one sparkly looking bike. You get a chance to see it in the pits. Hunter Bauer, I'm wondering with the moisture if that's going to take away that edge on that outside cushion, Todd. It might have added to the edge, Brian. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really sure. But we're giving these riders a, a few hot laps to check out the track. I, I heard uh, I heard talk. They didn't like the track, but they all seem to be getting around pretty good, the ones that are trying. So uh, hopefully we're going to be good to go here in a minute. Evans, we mentioned uh, earlier, the, uh, the the grizzled veteran out here among the youngsters. 
I was thinking it, but I was afra afraid to say it. Good on you, Todd. Spitting that one out, the grizzled the veteran. Yeah, actually, a, a couple years ago, Brian, I had a couple of his buddies that actually wanted to pull me out of the booth and pop me a couple times because they didn't like the fact that I had said uh, Chris Evans had skipped the dash for cash because he wanted to have a nap because he was older. <laughs> I talked to Chris later. I said, all due respect, man, you were, you were killing it out there. I'm one of your biggest fans, and, and he laughed it off. That's but, just yeah. comedy right there. Man. Yeah, no, that's... Uh, a little it, oversensitive much there a bit. Yeah, that's... Uh, again, he, he is mid-50s. He's out here playing with these kids, and he does not look out of place at all, and he certainly knows his way around this track. Yeah. So it looks like uh, I think we're going to get lined up here. Bauer is talking to uh, referee Ward Jeffries. Evans pulls up beside him, followed by Seguin, Hoy, and Isherwood. Seguin there on that 22 in the uh, Red Fox here. Had some miraculous rides here. We would probably call this definitely his home track. We got Hoy there. What on the inside, uh, just kind of getting jockeyed around the 39, Clayton Isherwood on screen. And there's the 24 of Hunter Bauer. And we have seen him earlier tonight just pull out what was the most thrilling victory using that outside and of course now with a little bit moisture in there to see if that's going to work for him there uh, evans getting lined up so i think the riders all getting queued up where they want to be ladies and gentlemen fox sports racing network flow sports racing network as well Seguin with a great hole shot look at bauer looking around the outside we got evans down there in third up the inside and the battle for second, Isherwood there having a great view in fourth, coming into turn oh. four. It is a bit slick. You can see some dust coming up underneath. I like that. The 22 of Seguin coming into turn one. Hunter Bauer has a great view. Look at these riders. It's a very similar style on our top two. Now we're leaning back in that seat, Brian. He's trying to get that back tire to hook up. We're going to see him try and duck on the inside of Seguin here, but Seguin's having none of it. Wow. Just crisscrossing Bauer with the purple rock yards there on the forks, not shying away at all. Now that back straightaway into turn three. They come just guns up blazing. Isherwood making a play with Evans. Top two, that's the race. Seguin, Bauer, Evans, Isherwood, then Hoy. Bauer now looking up the inside on two, but there it is. Holds the him off for now. Oh my, he was right abreast on the back straight and now trying the outside let's see if he can do that cut in he is trying to cut in Todd. and now back to the outside he can make that outside work for him like he did earlier tonight looks like the 22 sequin didn't have the strongest deep race but boy he's making it come together right now into the evening program where it really matters and these top two separating themselves a little bit from evans back there in third there goes Bauer on the outside. I'm, I'm loving it. This is oh, not over. Looking up the inside. And Bauer going into three, slides up the inside. Wow. He's going to shuffle Seguin back to second. The Seguin have an answer. Wow, what a move. Bauer, totally awesome. He's drifting wide. Oh, Seguin, Seguin goes wide as well. He's on that blue groove, down that back straightaway. Just over a lap to go, Brian. Bauer might have made his move at the perfect time. Seguin may not have an answer. Now, Evan third. Looks like Bauer really made his strategy work. Evan still fighting hard to hold off Isherwood back there, and uh, Sean Hoy pushing the field along back there in fifth. So, Hunter Bauer takes the open X for heat race number one and we've seen sean hoy do some pretty credible things but settling for fifth so watching uh watching bauer take that victory there uh it's hard to tell was uh was bauer studying for that long and finally made his move or was seguin really working that hard to keep him back there brian well i think a little bit of both seguin just got great traction off the start and that is going to be key here tonight it's a bit slick underneath so the riders are going to have be really handy with that clutch to get that release just right because we've seen earlier in the day some riders just too aggressive in getting that wheel spin and basically standing still. So heat race number two coming in the line. We've got Tyler's brother Brandon Seguin on the 19. 
one of his last runs a couple years ago last week in Speedway. He had a phenomenal run. He's hoping to carry that into today. Number two, Lenny Monroe. He's uh, been kind of retired for a while. Lightning Lenny, we call him, and uh, it's nice to see him back. 112 is Marin Tent. 60, Christy Dooley. And the uh, 49 back there, of course, that's our former uh, Open Expert champion in this class, Brody Buckin. Right, so yeah, yeah, Brody Buck in there. I had uh, a little bit crossed up with Hunter Bauer earlier uh, because he left such an impression on me, uh, the 46. So it's great to have him in this class as well. The vintage open. Christy Dooley gets a much better start. She's going to lead all the boys into turn one. We got somebody coming around the outside. I think that's Bucking. Here comes Brandon Seguin up the inside. So Dooley had a much better start than she did earlier. Bucking, Seguin, Dooley, and Aaron Penn, followed by Monroe. So Bucking, another one of those guys from uh, Southwest Ontario that grew up on the, uh, the pea gravel tracks, came to terms with the clay tracks a few years ago. It's paying off here tonight early. Yeah, the open expert heat too there. That old bike had me looking at vintage. Aaron Tent now trying to make his way past Dooley. Might have it done in turn two. So Buckin, Seguin, Marin Tent, Dooley, Monroe. That's your running order. 112. Marin Tent. Had some good races earlier this afternoon, parlaying that into the night program. But look at the style there from our leader. Just awesome. Bucking. Bucking, of course, getting support from Parts Canada. And he, uh, as I said, he didn't grow up on these clay tracks, but you don't become a serious champion unless you figure out how to ride these tracks, and he's done that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not that Honda Framer. Only uh, two. So the Framers are sitting first and fifth with the DTX bikes. Two, three. DTX sandwich four. we got going on. Yeah, bucking. Keeping it real. Solid run by Brandon Seguin holding on to second right now. Yeah. Let, Lenny Monroe falling off the pace just a little bit. He's uh, He's been out of it for a few years, so good on him for being out there. Seguin still got the elbows up top, still charging forward. Uh, local boy, the Baron Tet in third. And then the big 60 of uh, Christy Duncan. Bucking uh, just styling out there, coming out of turn four for the final time. And takes it. Quick little glance back to see the cushion. Yeah, the 60 of Mula. She, uh, she got a bad start earlier today, and again, not the greatest start here, but she's pretty racy here against the guys. Yeah, she is. Uh, Christy Dooley has many, many laps on this track, and uh, she has made her way up through the ranks, won some championships along the way. And uh, much like Tay a little later on in the intermediate class, she is not afraid to uh, get out there and get her nose dirty and rub elbows with the boys. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible in this sport to see uh, the parody amongst the sexes. So many young up girls through the ranks. Taya Little uh, is, is just a phenomenal talent. And uh, great to see her from a, from a marvelous family of flat trackers. Now, here we come. We've got Pouliot, the number 16 Kawasaki rider. And of course, there, uh, Todd, we know Dustin Lambert on the number six is a, a force to be reckoned with. He had a good run earlier. He had a fantastic run. Number nine, that's Donnie Taylor former multi-time Canadian champion, 73, Doug Lawrence, speaking of champions. And of course, Dustin Brown on the number one. He is our two-time reigning champion. So, uh, man, there's a lot of checkered flags in this race. Oh, we got, we got Brown apparently with a problem on this bike. Oh no, this, this I was gonna say, Todd, is a stacked field. Uh, this is gonna be a heck of a heat race. We're gonna give them some time. That's what I like about the progressiveness here of Flat Track Canada. You know, we, we wanna keep, give these athletes the chance to, to maybe uh, have a few minutes to get the tuner on that bike, maybe put some gas in the tank. <laughs> is, that, uh, 
Is that what's going on here? Did, uh, maybe if that bike's gone, maybe he can switch back to his DTX machine. Uh, I, I, I don't think anybody would be too happy with that move. I'm not. Uh, no, no. I saw him reaching for the gas cap. Um, I'm not sure what's up. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out. You know, these other riders right here are getting restless. Yeah. And of course, these bikes are going to start to get a little warm as yeah. well. Yeah. As I say that, Dougie Lawrence is going to circulate a little bit of so, fluid through that bike. So we've got uh, the officials hand up with that five minutes or. Look, you know. Lor Lawrence is coming back to the line and here comes Dustin Brown. So we'll, All right. we'll All have right to try on. and figure out what, uh, what happened earlier. Maybe a little vapor lock action. But, uh, but it's great to see uh, Dustin Brown on that number one back onto the starting grid. Reformation here, our head referee taking care of business. as he quickly initiates that bump and grind into the slide. Lawrence and the number nine of Don Taylor having it coming together. Now look at Dustin Brown on the inside on that framer. He's got a great line, great style. 73 of Dougie Golden Boy Lawrence oh, on the no. outside. Oh, Dougie got way sideways there. Did he ever. Now, Taylor, yeah. another big gift uh, into the lead early, man. We know he can ride this track, and he's out on that outside of it. We got a real wide blue group. Gaffin and Dave Pouliot struggling in fifth place on the Kawasaki, the Quebec rider. We know not most comfortable on these play tracks. So back out front, we have got the number nine of Don Taylor, then the number one, Dustin Brown, and of course, Dougie Lawrence. And surprised to see uh, Dustin Lambert there in sixth, also number six, also struggling in fourth. So let's see if Brown can make a play for the lead here. He's closing that gap, Brian. He's a little bit closer. Taylor has a little look over, and I think that's just going to fuel Brown. Usually, a, not always a sign of weakness when a rider looks back, but it opens the door and can really get the ire of the rider in second. So I think Brown now really wants to turn on the juice and get a move on Taylor. The young gun, Brown, our number one plate holder, making a name for himself down in the U.S. Kurt Meager racing Honda, down that parts Canada Honda back straightaway, diving into turn three with a whole bunch of momentum, forcing Taylor wide. They're both out in that fringes of the cushion, Todd. We've got ourselves a battle for first place. We can see those top two riders, Brian. They're slowly moving up to the top of the track. Lawrence isn't following that line yet, but you watch Brown and Taylor, and they're definitely up near the fence. Now Dougie is starting to venture out there as well. Now really impressed with the riders and this track. The blue groove is starting to get wider and wider, Todd. As now, let's see if Brown can do something on the cushion. They're coming into the last corner. Brown comes in hard, Taylor with it a little glance. Woo! Sweet. So early on, some heavy contact with the 73 of Dougie Lawrence and our winner, Don Taylor. They had a big coming together, forcing uh, Taylor to be a bit of a tank slapper. Brown pulling up alongside Taylor here, just uh, trying to catch the body language here. And uh, here comes Todd. We got a replay of the start. So off the line they go. We're going to see the 73 cut right in. Oh. Boom, they touch. That was heavy, heavy contact. You had, you had Lawrence looking to dive in, and Taylor had uh, kind of already committed to that line. But yeah, you, na you nailed it, Brian. There was heavy contact there. That, that's talent for both of those riders to keep those things upright. See the way Dougie just cut in on Brown, and uh, boy, oh boy, oh, Brown's going to have a little bit of fire for Dougie after that, and, and of course Taylor hitting him, getting into that bit of a tank slapper. And that, that bump actually just initiated him into a beautiful slide, and he just carried that uh, through to the win. Getting into our vet final now, I believe. So I love I love this, a lot of, a lot of talent here, and a lot of these riders have kids in, in the other classes. Yeah. 
So pretty cool to see. A lot of these riders were kids in the other classes. <laughs> so yeah, bet. Bet riders, we've got Oros. We got the number 19 there. That's Glenn Brown. That's the father there of, uh, of Dustin, our current champion. So really cool to see that. Uh, 31 is another fast rider. That's Jeff Oros. He's uh, on the outside of the back row. The 23. Uh, the 23. Todd is. Uh, Sorry, oh, Brett. sorry, the 233, Brett Thompson. Yeah, 233, Brett Thompson. Leo. Heck of a start by that Hall of Fame member, John Keogh there. Glenn Brown right there in second, Thompson in third. Here comes Jeff Orles on the 31, followed by Thistleweight. Orles now looking around the outside as they go into three and four. Wow, Brown challenging Keo on the inside. I'm like, I'm liking what I'm seeing right there from uh, the senior Brown. Of course, John Kehoe there in second place. His notoriety from Speedway, uh, basically unstoppable in the country. Look at that outside move. Speaking of Speedway, that's another former Speedway rider, Jeff Oros, going around the outside. So I think uh, Oros has found that line Bauer was using earlier, and he likes it as he makes a pass for the lead past Brown. Wow, awesome down the back stretch coming into Turns three, four. Brown's got a peak on the inside. Completely different line, both entry and exit for these two riders. Thompson's made his way around Kehoe for third. This will wait now under fire from Rick Gumby on that 77 machine. Uh, Gumby uh, uh, blasts from the past as well. Uh, he, Rick Gumby's been around for many, many years. Great to see him back out. It's the ice race with him uh, way, way back in the day. Oh, he's been doing this a long, long time. Yeah, that would have been back in the uh, the mid uh, the mid to late 80s. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have lap traffic as part of the action shortly, Brian. Yeah. Gummy and Thistleweight going at it tooth and nail there. Gummy you know? looking to slide up the inside and makes the move on Thistleweight on the exit of two. Gumby's making a move. I've not seen much of Gumby on the DTX. Oh. Great win there. Jeff Oros. Oros grabs a victory. Glenn Brown in second, followed by Brent Thompson. But again, we've got uh, we've got some talent in all the ranks here, Brian, and uh, a couple of former Speedway champions out here. Oros taking the nice. win. Great, great camaraderie out on track. It's a nice thing to see the sportsmanship. Keel, Keel had a heck of a start, and then he just got shuffled back consistently. You know, we're so used to seeing Keel win. We, we are. So often, so uh, he's going to have a little soul searching. I'm sure he's not going to be too pleased. He's a heck of a mechanic as well. Uh, most of these guys are, you know, to keep these bikes going. A lot of them have their uh, their tuning papers and excellent knowledge of these working motorcycles and uh, suspension. So... so these veterans, uh, you know, wearing a lot of hats at these events, usually helping out younger riders as well. Novice DTX final coming to the line. That's the 22 of Blake Salenzi, who's l leading them out here. Boudreaux should, uh, yeah, I thought so. Boudreaux is going to get the first pick on the line. 3-3-3, three, 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 that's the uh, triple threat, Tyler Thompson. A few fans for Thompson. And, a few uh, fans for Thompson. I think we got a few fans for Salenzi. Absolutely. Yeah, here he, he here was, comes the 94. Of course, that's Adrian St. Amand. He's oh. won six races here already, Brian. The heat races didn't go his way. Does he rebound here right, right now or what? Todd, you think it's odd that St. Amand has picked that inside line again where he had two dismal starts this afternoon with wheelspin. Thought maybe he'd want to slot out to get some traction. Of course, St. Amand undefeated here so far this year in the preliminary races. So let's just see if he had learned something. He is the favorite coming in for the win. Here, novice DTX, St. Oman there on that Suzuki in with the all black helmet. So this is gonna be super interesting as we get into an eight lap final. I'm calling Tyler Thompson with the whole shot here. And that's the 333, the triple threat. Yeah. Nice. Woo! St. Oman 
gets off a bit better, but you've called the Thompson hole shots all night long. Oh no, we've got Ryder here down. If he can't start that, just get into the infield and we're going to be green. Is that Denstad, I believe, on the 91? Oh, it is, and he is a, a very talented rider, so we're losing a... Oh, here comes St. Amon making that move. Nice. Woo. Way to go. So, Henry yeah. and St. Amon doing a ton when it matters. In that main event, we got a rider down, turn three, four. So we've got yellows here. We're not red flagging it just yet. Is that, uh, it's hard to tell, is that Pinaway? Oh man, another fabulous young rider. So we lost two, two key players here, right off the hop. Yeah, yeah, that is Pinaway. I didn't catch him going down. Looked like he was going to take his helmet off. I don't think that's the... You know, I was almost hoping for a red flag. Well, there, it almost looks like some of them are slowing down. Like well, I, I mean, St. Amon, St. Amon just gave that yeah. away, uh, going slow yeah. on the yellow. So passing on yellow, uh, I, I just don't I just don't think that's uh, that's quite right right there. So let's see if St. Amon can get him back the old-fashioned way here with with grit and determination and just clipping that. Yeah, St. Amon way down on the inside. Yeah, just clipping that cone. So here goes Adrian. He's, oh, wow. That he is, is really close, pushing close, on the inside. Close, yeah. <laughs> so oh, what a battle for oh, the lead. Oh, oh, and he just stands right up. Yeah, that's good on him for keeping that bike up. I thought he was going over the high side. The worst thing possible for a motorcycle racer is that front wheel coming into the back end of another wider, usually certain disaster. Stood St. Amon right up. Boy, oh, boy. And you are right. What, what athleticism for young Adrian St. Amon to hold on to it. But let's give some kudos to our leader. Tyler the Thompson. Yeah, the team triple threat, though. You know, I thought for sure when he made that pass, there was a red flag out the back straightaway. So same thing again. A little more cautious for St. Amon. He didn't want to get that front wheel tangled up in there again. So white flag coming out here. Todd, our last lap. Can Adrian do it? Let's have a big push here for some redemption on that pass. Adrian uh, looking like he might try the outside here, Brian. Coming on the outside at two. Pitaway finally gets his bike off the fence. Coming out at three and four for the final time. Oh! Tyler Thompson holding oh, on. Man. Thompson with the win, but how about St. Amon? I'm not sure if there's going to be any handshake in here. So Boudreaux, uh, the lost man there, we didn't, we didn't call his name once. <laughs> Gonna watch a replay here. This is where St. Amon goes in and uh, just clips the uh, back end there, gets stood right up. He's lucky he didn't gather it up into that wall. And, uh, so Thompson uh, coming along to grab the checkered flag. It, it, it was almost, uh, when I saw St. Amon clipping him, all I could think is broken collarbone. Oh. That's one of those where you usually go over the top side. Yeah, big and those, those don't come out well. And you know, Todd, when stuff like that happens, man, that that outside uh, that outside wall comes real quick. It's so for St. Amon to gather it back up and, and keep his flow and maintain second uh, from, a, from a real scary moment. So as the triple threat our winner, Tyler Thompson, does his victory lap. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Look forward to seeing you back for more Canadian flat track action after the break. And welcome back, race fans. We are right in the midst of the DTX Intermediate. Todd Valley, Brian Coster in the booth. Watching the number 13 with that skeleton outfit. Dan O'Man, he looks pretty darn hot. He's been fast all day, his boy Deadman, Todd, and uh, what a racing family. Look at the battle we got right now, heating up for third place. Absolutely. Little had that whole shot. It's been shuffled back just a little bit. Corbeil, Brown, and Tail Little are all in there. Wow. Awesome racing here. Battle for second is four riders. Tail Little on the outside on the number 11. She has been phenomenal here racing against the guys. What a great line from oh, the middle. At Diving right past Corbeil there. Man, oh man, her and that position working as one. Great move there. So she's slotted in, but Corbeil ain't going anywhere. Look at that line on the outside, Todd. Down Kyle down. Brown now taking Woo. advantage of that outside, trying to get around uh, Phil Little. Here comes Taya Little. So Phil, Phil, we saw getting the whole shot earlier and work his way up to the backwards. He's hanging on really well right now. Taya taking it. 
taking him on the outside all the way around. Let's just see. She gets forced right oh, up. Oh, she's right She's got to get backed out. She's got to back out of it oh, because Brown has shoved her there. Now she is going to be not too happy at all. So let's see if Taya Little can parlay that anchor into another pass. She's really good around the outside. Boy, she had him. She had his number on that back straightaway. But Brown showing some amazing defense, taking her right to the wall. Absolutely. She she made contact with that well motorcycle club. Bill there, she is, there. there she is, Todd. Coming into turn one. She's on the outside. Way outside. Oh, she's she's up at those bottle yeah, decks, yeah. Ryan. Yeah, opens the door for... Oh, look at that. She splits the defense there. Oh, my gosh. There she oh, what a play! Down. Holy cow, Tay a little. Awesome. One lap to go. Woo! I love to see this young lady. Just... Such a great personality. Oh, Tyler Brown drifts way up the track now. That costs him, Absolutely. but he gets it right back. The lost man here is Boyd Deadman. Going to go check, read the checkers, I think, yeah. here. There's Johnny. Wow. Great way for Deadman taking the win by Taya Little. Gets the uh, hard charger award there. Yeah, because, boy, she had that move just solidified and got shoved right in the wall, had to back out of it, but I sure like the way she rebounded back from that. Absolutely. Taya Little with uh, support from Core Pack, Patty's Place, Tommy Ten, Performance ATV, Little's Racing, Golden Brothers, and Mum and Dad. She, she bounced off that wall, Brian, and then it was like days of thunder. She found that cool trickle extra gear, and, and she was just right back in the mix. But, boy, Deadman... For years and years, I have watched this young man race, and I have said every time I've watched him race, he is one of the smoothest guys out there. He looks so composed, and on a track like this, that's what gets it done. And uh, Deadman going almost wire to wire. He didn't quite have the whole shot, but he made the move coming out of four and uh, got the win. And yeah. we're just going to uh, take a minute. Brian, we're going to throw it down to Flat Track Canada President Aaron Hesmer. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause for Boy Deadman. Boy, uh, you gapped the field in that last race. You made a switch from Honda to KTM, and man, it's really suited you. Oh yeah, I love this thing. It's it's sweet. Uh, first time I did really good on it, uh, like at uh, Walton, but uh, got like you know. Looks like you're in your own tonight all the way from Woodstock, Ontario, representing the Dave Aldania suit. Are you gonna win the next race? Well, that's what we're here to try for. Right on, big round of applause for your winner, Boy Deadman. Mr. Hesmer talking to our race winner, uh, Boy Deadman, and uh, of course, I mentioned, Brian, how smooth Deadman is. Uh, talking to some of the riders earlier on on this track, sometimes you gotta go slow to go fast. This reminds me a lot, actually, totally different material, but when 2013, we raced the Daytona Bike Week series, and you got to that Daytona short track, and uh, trying to get my son to wrap his head around, just letting off the throttle just a little bit to get that wheel moving forward before you gun it. And uh, same kind of idea here, but uh, I, I think maybe somebody like Hunter Bauer may surprise us later on when he moves up the track and tries that high line again, because uh, it was working for him earlier. Good work for him again. We're giving a little track, another little dab of moisture, and uh, that makes it racier for everybody out there. Well, Todd, but you make a great point here in, in flat track. It's that transition from throttle on throttle off and then easing back into the slide with the throttle on so that little nuances in the transition there's hundreds and uh, tens of seconds that make all the difference in that drive and able to get that traction down so uh, it, it really is a finesse game out here at the upper levels and uh, it's just a matter of tents and, and the riders really having to keep that concentration level and focus forward because the other riders we see what tight company these people race comfortably in it's quite amazing uh, to see them in those slides at uh, great speeds and just uh, uh, the trust in their fellow athletes uh, has to come into play and it doesn't always work out and uh, you know he, he can get some pretty big wrecks out here in flat track and hence the new technologies with those big bottle bags lining the track where traditionally those were just wooden fences and hay bales and uh, you got in there and you were snapping a limb just going to uh, you're absolutely right Brian we're just going to take a second and throw it to commercial break
All right, race fans, welcome back to Welland County Speedway. We've got the ATVs out on the line right now. We are live on Fox Sports Racing and Flow Network. What a rocket of a start, holy <laughs> cow. Him and Graham were side by side there. I believe that's Mickey Vance back there in third. But geez Louise, those things take off from the line. Man, this kid has got style out front on the 208. And I tell you, the 216 didn't get the greatest start. He's kept he's kept them way more honest than this. Uh, Boothby there having it all his way. Chuck Graham and the 216 is be closer than this earlier, so where it matters most into the main event, Boothby just finds another gear out here in the ATV main. Well, I mentioned it earlier, Brian, a uh, couple weeks ago, he had a, a GPS attached to his machine. He was doing 145 kilometers an hour on this little quarter mile track. That's, uh, that's impressive. Those are speeds usually made for the one mile courses. So yeah, so uh, that's that's up in around the 90 odd miles an hour. I think this track is coming beautifully. There's no sign of dust right now from the Z these ATV guys. And uh, we got a nice wide groove happening. As we go through the program, of course we got guys like Bauer who might not even use the groove, so that remains to be seen. But these ATVs are just flying right now. Get on, Boothby, Boothby, Graham, and Vance. Yeah, Boothby, Todd, just I can't believe the lead he's uh, accumulated so quickly considering Graham was just a bike length behind him all night long. So now Boothby, he uh, has kept something under wraps for the main event. He's keeping the bike a lot straighter here, Todd. Earlier tonight when it was a little drier, he was really drifting early and, and now he's maintaining that drive forward more so then cranking it over in traditional flat track style. Still getting a nice controlled slide there, but not near the, the uh, slide angle earlier today when it was dry. So less than half a lap to go for our leader, Boothby. Starting to, uh, starting to think, Brian, he might have been playing a little bit in the heat races the way this just turned out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, definitely was sandbagging a bit by the looks of it. Mickey Vans there in the 7-Eleven uh, keeping Graham Honest, at the very least, picking up third. Into the checkers they go. And, uh, you know, these ATVs, you know, lots of respect for them. They have a ball, and, uh, you know, they really work super hard on the tuning and the, and the chassis of these things to get them just set up for this oval racing. And then you get into the, uh, uh, you know, some of these guys that, you know, like putting the R1 motors in these things. We've seen in years past, so uh, that's pretty darn cool. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we'll see uh, Doucette come out later on in that uh, open ATV final. I, I never talked to him today, unfortunately, to find out what exactly he has for an engine in there, but uh, we can tell you right now it's not a stock ATV machine. <laughs> it's definitely out of a crotch rocket yeah. of some stripe. When you'll hear that, ladies and gentlemen, a little later tonight when it comes sailing by, and not a lot of restrictions here on, on you know, your exhaust and your noise levels, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's pretty much open season and when they say open you know they pretty much mean it and i really like that it just you know really brings that tuner's uh <laughs> expectations to the forefront without all uh, these nitpicky rules so first expert final of the night brian expert dtx final we got donnie taylor doug lawrence hunter bauer leading them out there's sequin on the 22 15 is uh chris evans oh, 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 race look, look at this field there is uh Probably just looking at this field, we've probably got uh, upwards of 20 Canadian championships in here. This is insane. Yeah. This, ladies and gentlemen, and all you race fans here joining us live, this is a spectacular lineup of riders. Of course, number nine, the veteran Donnie Taylor gets his first pick based on all the heat races. Well, and, and, and our two-time champion just got the fourth pick. So what's that tell you about the caliber we got here tonight? Race fans, we're, we're in for a real treat here tonight. Dustin Lambert there, first pick on row two, followed by the 22 of Tyler Seguin. Brandon Seguin will be out here somewhere as well. Forgot to mention Chris Evans sliding up into that front row. DTX expert, 
We have three rows of riders. Chris. Six on the front row. Six. Six on the second, and then two on the third row. So we've got 14 guys. Oh, we got a lady and too. girls. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 14 riders. I, uh, let me rephrase that, yes. Toddy. Uh, Todd Valley, Brian Coster up in the booth here, calling it. So this front row right here, on any given night, this is your winner. Yes. And uh, yeah. not, not to take away from the riders in the other rows by any means, but the amount of talent on that front row is amazing. 12 lap final coming up, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, man, you don't want to be a betting man here, Todd Valley, as the lights go red, green. Who's gonna get that whole shot? Evans with a great drive, but Dougie Lawrence, the golden boy on the 73, wearing that beautiful speedway oh. suit. Look at the cross up move by Brown on the exit of two there. Oh. Look at Don Taylor's veteran move for the lead. And here oh. comes uh, Bauer on that 24. And Doug, oh, Doug, wow, just hold him off now that defense. And look at how Taylor can just get that Yamaha <laughs> in there. Bauer on the 24, has got the best seat in the house in third. But look at number one, Dustin Brown into turn three. All kinds of momentum. Oh, look at Taylor is. Tyler is kissing the bales. He's out of it. Bauer going for the lead. And then Taylor on the outside throws that seat away. Hunter Bauer now going for the lead. He's side by side with Lawrence. And Lawrence has some great drive, carrying some speed down the back straightaway. But Bauer with the line of choice. Now let's see if Lawrence can make that outside work. And he does. Pouliot. Pouliot up to fifth. Pouliot sandbagging earlier, too, as he drifts wide. But the battle up front on, we got the three way battle for the lead. The 24 Bauer. Three Here behind. comes Taylor. We got Dougie Lawrence. Bauer on the 24. Taylor, Taylor gets up right in there again. Manages to use that move on Lawrence. Lawrence looked like the favorite throwing that ass in. And Taylor with all kinds of traction. How is he doing it? Dragging an elbow. Bauer, Taylor. Taylor goes from first to first into turn two. On this track, Todd. You know how this is going to play out. At some point, Brown's going to go past all three of them. That's how I see this working out. And as you say it, Brown is making his move into third. Can Lawrence hold him off? What a gaggle of champions. Brown just holding steady on the number one Honda on the outside. Horse number one, Taylor. 24 power. Here comes Brown on the one. Lawrence favoring that inside. I'm like a dummy five. We have got ourselves a motorcycle race, ladies and gentlemen. Rest of the pack. Donnie Taylor. Donnie Taylor holding the lead on that Jimmy Sale machine. Now we're in second, but here comes former teammate Dustin Brown. Lawrence pushing hard in fourth. Wow, our defending champion. Todd, you predict him to move all the way up. You mentioned uh, Doug Sale, legendary tuner, flat track, dirt track, ice racing. Just a legend. And he's there. First place. And starting to use that outer line is uh, Taylor as they get into lap. So is Lawrence. Traffic. Lawrence has moved up the track as well. Yeah. We got lap traffic in a minute here. Yeah, we're uh, getting into halfway. We have the, the blue. Blue flag, two laps, I mean. Two laps. Blue flag is out. Could that play into Taylor's hand. Bauer holding court in second place. A nice shot of the number nine of Don Taylor. This buttering that Yamaha around this play circuit. Five to seven degree bent turn. Coming into more lappers. Bauer holding court in second. But Taylor's way out in that cushion time. Pouliot gets a little crossed up, almost high side there, but he's held on to fifth. Seguin sixth. Evan seventh, I'm telling you, wow. He's right. What a toss up. But the number nine, Don Taylor, coming out of retirement, semi retirement. Yeah. And well, some, some good camaraderie there between Brown and Bauer doing a nice catwalk, and uh, awesome. Going to replay here. Dougie Lawrence and uh, Don Taylor going at it. 
Look at that slide job by uh, Lawrence. A little bit of contact. I think you see Taylor lift up his foot right up to the wall. Never in? gets out of that throttle, Brian. He's right in the weeds there, brother, and keeps that throttle on. I was visions of him just getting gathered up by that wall, but just mere millimeters. Keeps it straight. Dougie having a word with the officials there. I, I know he's not going to be pleased with something out on track. Yeah, uh, Dougie doesn't like finishing fourth, I don't think. And uh, to, to that effect, our, our reigning national champion finishing third, not a bad result, but he won't like that. No, he won't, but he did congratulate our winner. So uh, uh, oodles a class out of uh, Dustin Brown. Another good one. point, sorry, Brian, is uh, Dave Pouliot, who struggled all day long. May Making uh, making ground up to fifth, and we're going to throw it down to Aaron Hesmer down in victory lane. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause for your heat race winner, main event winner, Donnie Taylor. Don, that was an unbelievable race. You bounced off the bottle bags. You came out of retirement. You had <laughs> death-defying eyes, and you basically said to everybody, I'm going to win this championship series this year. And uh, unbelievable. The most winningest rider of all time in Canada. How did it feel to come out and spank these guys in a race like that? Uh, it was a good race. Uh, you know, I definitely tangled up with Dougie a little bit in the middle there. Um, not the cleanest race in moves, in my opinion, but uh, we've been down that road before him and I. We've been racing a long time together, and uh, I just wanted it a little more than everybody else, I think. You looked very hungry. You came out in your heat races. You drove it into the corner harder than anybody I've seen. Uh, there, you just showed some very aggressive racing. Uh, what's the next final look like? Uh, just, you know, I've been struggling with uh, starts all day today. Just super, uh, super slow off the start today. Just battling wheel spins. So we're kind of trying to get the start figured out. I think if I can get out front off the bat, it'll be a little bit of a easier run for the, the next main. Right on. There you have it. Big round of applause for the rider of Port Colborne, Ontario, Donnie Taylor. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Fox Sports Racing and the Flow Racing Network and all the glorious fans live here in attendance. Ladies and gentlemen at home, you get a chance to come out to one of these flat track events. Do it. You'll have a great time, a great night. The sights, the sounds, the smells, and the track food, Todd Valley. The track food is not too bad, but uh, man, that action we just had out there. You heard the fans uh, applauding there. They appreciated that effort by Donnie Taylor and everybody out there. That was a heck of a race. Yeah, awesome stuff. And uh, we got lots more to come out on track. We got the uh, Speedway bikes here, kind of a bit of a uh, support race. Got two of these nitro burning bikes, no brakes, and uh, real cool stuff here, uh, reminiscent of, uh, you know, the the glories of, of Speedway racing and, uh, and those spike ice racers they use in Europe. Yeah, and John Bennett uh, changed things up a little bit from earlier on, and he's uh, he's leading the way right now. Of course, our uh, our Flat Track Canada president, Aaron Hesmer, is a former Canadian Speedway champion. And uh, Hesmer was known for, if you ever watched him go through the corners, his tire looked like an S, because he ran about three pounds of air pressure. The only thing holding it on the rim was uh, drywall screws. Wow. Yeah, man, it does. You know, some riders can, can do that, that kind of squishy feel. Others, uh, not at all, but uh, that was a technique that worked for Aaron for many years. And great to see these guys out here putting on a bit of a show for the fans, just a bit of a filler race. Uh, and uh, hopefully this will get some attention of some more Speedway bikes in the future. Oh, and a big, a big backfire there along the checkers. So uh, fun to have them here as night's starting to creep in. We've got our lights warming up by the looks of things get a nice little wrinkle uh, to this these races traditionally run more into the evenings at night bennett and uh, carnigan putting on a good show there for the fans and uh, as you said hopefully this will bring more back into uh, into the speedway ranks i think we're going to get now into our novice open final last time it came down to a battle between uh, tyler thompson and adrian saying i'm on St. Amon with big contact at one point. Lucky to keep that bike upright. Well, maybe lucky isn't the right word, Brian. Oh, yeah. Skilled to keep that bike upright. 
And uh, but I'm going to call Thompson once again for the whole shot. But I think Saint Amand is looking for a little redemption in this one. Well, I've uh, you know not not seen the the triple threat Tyler Thompson on the three 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 get anything but whole shots here tonight. So <laughs> he definitely is the favorite. Let's see if Saint Amand can get a victory here before the night's out. It would be really good for his confidence to keep that uh, momentum going. And you know he was pretty darn close in that last novice race coming in second let's see if he can pull in a first here Salenzi crowd favorite on the 22 lining up on yep. the outside there's a nice shot of St. Amon uh, there on screen right on that inside always going for that inside and he's got a much better he did uh, yeah. gate uh, uh, drive out of the gate I should say 10 lap final watch for Boudreau on the 7 as well Once again, it's Thompson on the triple three that's going to lead them. St. Amon back there in third. Judging by the helmet color, that's got to be the number seven. Of Udo. Look at St. Amon with that move diving into third. Sweet. Or, gets, sorry, turn three. Gets, gets, uh, gets a little sideways. And St. Amon has a really good jump. But Thompson just pulled him. And there goes St. Amon into the lead early, Todd. Fantastic. Fantastic for him because he struggled kind of throughout the night, but then got better into the main. So, seeing a man to hold on would be uh, really good for him and his team. Thompson, respectable night taking the other well, dogs. Oh, we got a rider going way, way high. I think that's Denson. I honestly thought he was going straight into the uh, model bags there. Kind of yeah. got me a little worried there for a second. He's cut the grass there along those weeds. Seeing him on. Bike sounds like it's really hooking up right now. So now the battle is for second place. That's Boudreaux and Thompson going at it. Boudreaux on the seven, Thompson on the 3-3-3 three, three, three machine. Boudreaux now creeping up a little closer as they exit four. Awesome corner speed for the seven of Boudreaux. And his, his entry speed is real good, especially coming into turn three. So here he comes. He gets on the gas really well here down the straightaway, getting forced wide. I see he just hold it on a little longer as they transition into the turns. Not quite this time around. There was really good defense for Thompson there. Let's see if Budro can shake it up a bit, keep Thompson guessing, make him think twice for where he's gonna go. Let's now Todd coming into turn three. A good drive. See if he can make something happen. Thompson holding on to that inside line through three and four. St. Amon with a nice three-second gap. Boudreaux looking on the inside of Thompson. He wants by badly. Thompson doing everything he can. He's got that elbow up way high, Brian. He's not going to make it easy. Now St. Amon into lappers. Boudreaux now taking a peek. Coming into turn one. In front of the grandstands they go. Boudreaux still trying to find his way around Thompson. Thompson not letting it happen. St. Amon now having it all his way. All side by side now. Wow. Second place, Boudreaux makes the move. Into turn one, Boudreaux finally gets around Thompson into that second position. That right there, Todd, was just tenacious. Never give up. Just keep the pressure on, and it's paid off. Now he's up in the second. Just has to hold on here. We're into the last lap. So Boudreaux, a uh, really win it. Boudreaux counts. got what? off the gas. I thought he thought the he, th he thought the that race was, the was over. Bro. Boudreaux, Boudreau thought yeah, that was he the thought checker. It was over. I think his next stop's the optometrist. Yeah. Because so Saint Amand takes the victory. Here comes Thompson. Boudreaux's going to be disgusted here. Oh, oh yeah. Buddy. I guess. Oh. Look at the disappointment. Yeah, that body language says it all right there. Can you there. imagine trying that hard? What we were saying earlier is every race is a learning experience. He just learned a valuable one right there, ladies and gentlemen. Did you catch that? Called the white flag. The checkers got right out of the throttle after making that tenacious pass. All for naught as Adrian St. Amon, the man of the hour on that Suzuki. Great to see the yellow bike take a win here. And Adrian, that's the way to cap off a night awesome family he's just been a, a joy to interview right from a young toddler just so poised so professional a sponsor's dream 
Yep. Adrian St. Amon with the checkers here at Welland, and just uh, about, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes drive to his home in Burlington, Ontario. Um, his dad, uh, an awesome mechanic. Just great to see them out here and super enthusiastic about the sport of flat track. You know what the problem with St. Amon winning is if Aaron interviews him, we're going to run out of time. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. We're going to get to see him here with his helmet off in a minute. And someday he's going to take over our jobs, and he's going to do a darn good job at that, too. Yeah, total, total pro. So let's have a look here. We'll keep our eye down at the winner's circle. Todd Valley, Brian Coster up in the booth here live at Welland County Speedway. Uh, thank again all the fans for coming out. We love you here, and just great to have you supporting this event and all the vendors. Looks like we're going right into the 85cc final here, Brian. Uh, we're not going to get an interview with these guys. So uh, okay, we got Liam uh, Kasky on the number eight. We got the 70. That's Seth Little. 58 is Caleb Hunt. The 98. That's Durawadi. Remember his dad? Yeah. Right? Oh, although he crossed the field earlier. <laughs> cool. Kasky. Look at the start by uh, Hunt, but then he gets gobbled up by Kasky and Little. Kasky out front. Her taught style on this kid. Well, that's and we mentioned earlier. Kurt Beeger has already got a pitting under the Kurt Beeger tent. Uh, he is the youngest rider, if I had to guess, ever to be uh, signed by Kurt Beeger. And uh, there, there's good reason for it. We mentioned earlier the corner speed on him and uh, Seth Little as well. You know what? Little's not going away right now. He's nope. uh, a couple of bike lengths behind. No, we've got ourselves a, a motorcycle race. Look at the speed for Little coming in. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. He is not letting Kasky take this easily. Two young guns. These guys have all the makings of future champions of Look the sport. Look He's looking up the inside. You know, if, if you didn't know better, you think this was the pro class. When you look at the style of these riders, just a bike length apart. I'm liking, I'm liking Little's line. He's just kind of... And Little takes it. Little makes a move on the exit of four. Wow, beautiful oh, pass. Pat Kasky looking to answer right back. Well, Kasky is. But he's up the inside. He's having a peak, Todd. Oh, Little. It's just the door. Ferme the port. So Little, our new leader after uh, stalking Kasky. And hear the different sounds of the bike. Of course, Little on that two-stroke. Kasky on that CRF 150. Yeah. And now Little's actually putting a bit of a gap on him. We, right? we figured that 150 had a bit of the advantage with that torquey four-stroke motor, and they did earlier in the night on the drier surface. But now it's a little wetter and a little more traction that two-strokes able to hook it up and uh, this is a big big victory for little if he can hang on he, he's got uh, he's up to like eight bite lengths brian i think uh kasky has got to twist that throttle really quick really hard if he's got any chance but uh no i thought we had one more lap we take the checkers seth little what a great run you know he's got fans here in the stands yeah for sure that was that was very entertaining man wow we thought uh we thought that was all all Kasky, but for Little to come in, uh, this is what I love about the sport. It, it is unpredictable, and we've seen it in all the classes. Um, you know, the, the heat races don't really mean a hill of beans come main event time. But but how talented is that family? You got Seth Little, you got Taya Little, you've got uh, Phil Little out there in the intermediate class as well. And uh, and I'm not sure if you were aware, but Tyler Seguin and Brandon Seguin, that's the uncles. So. Uh, there's probably a little bit of bench racing expertise going on there. Yeah, I, I, I love to be there around Christmas and Thanksgiving, <laughs> talking about racing. <laughs> so as uh, Seth Little takes his victory lap, we're just going to take a quick commercial break. All right, welcome back to Welland County Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on Flow Racing Network and Fox Sports Racing. This is the Open Intermediate. Open Intermediate. Thank you, Open Intermediate. There's so many riders, it's just amazing. Ishawa grabs that hole shot. Oro's back there in second. Deadman won earlier, he's currently in third. But he likes to make a move quick usually, so watch for it. What's going on out here early on? Tan Little in fourth place on the Suzuki. We want to watch for Boyd Deadman makes the move into one and two, takes the lead. So less than two laps. Wow. He's our new leader, pulls ahead of Oros. Oros now possibly looking to look back on the turn four. I'm, I'm, I'm liking Oros on the outside. 
Look at that going way wide. Denman has been the class of the field all night. He has not lost the race. So here he comes. That Dave Aldana skeleton suit. The number lucky 13. And then it is the reverse 31 of Oros. Right in tow. And then it's Isherwood in third. And Taya Little on the Suzuki. She's sitting a solid fourth. Deadman, Oros. Isherwood, look at Oros looking around the outside and Deadman. Deadman holds him off for now. And pay a little on the 11 now. Taking a look at Isherwood coming into turn one. She's closing that gap, Ryan. She's got sponsors here watching tonight. She wants to put on a good show. Elbows up on the outside for Isherwood. Isherwood is starting to bob around and so does Taya Little getting that little high side and then fighting it, getting back into the slide. Look at her getting that weight back down the back straightaway into the tuck a little bit. Great shot of Taya Little on the Suzuki, the number 11 back to our leader, the 13 of Boy Denman. Still under some heavy pressure there from the 31. He is just on the gas. Oros keeping him honest there. Look at this pack back here for both 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. That can go any way at any time. Certainly, and there they are on the green. A whole gaggle of riders just duking it out. You can see how shiny the blue groove is becoming as this track gets rubbered in. Logan Wilson now making a move on that 290 for the fifth position, making his way around the 909 of Rod Scott. He's gonna try and move forward. Tay a little edging ever closer to Isherwood on that third position. And Deadman still doing what he needs to do out front, but here comes Oros on the 31. He is definitely hungry for a win. He's sick of second place to Boy Deadman. He wants to get himself and his machine up front at the top of the box. Two lap board is up, Todd. We see on screen that battle for the lead is still raging. Battle for second or a third place, I should say, still get hot as the rest of the field starts duking it out. Taya Little still trying to close that gap. Oros, I'm not sure he's gonna have anything for Deadman here. Look at how far Deadman looks up the track, Brian. Yeah, yeah. He is looking down in turn one yeah. at the exit yeah. door. Well, uh, number one thing you learn in racing school of any strike is to look ahead. And we can see Deadman again looking way out. You gotta look where you wanna be. And he's demonstrating that real nice. So oh. boy, Deadman looks like he's gonna make it two for two on the night. Oros gets second. So Deadman, uh, again, this is uh, two weeks in a row here for him at Weller County Speedway. And uh, him and Oro's uh, congratulating each other. But I, I never noticed the last couple laps, Brian, you're watching Deadman as he exits four. He's already looking at the middle of one and two. It's amazing. Yeah, that's what you got to do. And, uh, you know, anyone that, you know, just, just go to your local go-kart track and start utilizing that technique and you'll sh shave uh, seconds off your lap time. Taya Little, of course, was uh, having a heck of a battle with uh, Jesse Isherwood back there going for that third position. And as I said, she's got a bunch of sponsors here tonight. Core Pack, Patty's Place, Tommy 10, Performance ATV, Little's Racing, Golden Brothers, and Mom and Dad. And Taya Little, once again, proving that she's not afraid to uh, get in there and mix it up. But Deadman uh, celebrating his uh, victory here for the second time tonight. And the fourth time in two weeks, Brian. Kids, uh, kids getting it done. Awesome, awesome, awesome riding for young Deadman. Looking good. What a cool suit. Yeah, boy. So That's yeah, he's fun. We're gonna have to send a shot of this to Dave Aldana to see what he thinks. You got it, man. That's a, that's a that's a real great tribute. Love this camera shot uh, into the pit area. Hills Production uh, shooting all the action. And we're going down with Aaron Hesmer. Going for two for two on the night. Give a big round of applause for Boyd Deadman. Boyd, uh, once again, pulled it off. What, what, how do you feel going into the next round at Humberstone? Uh, pretty, I, I feel good. I, 
when I ride this thing, it, do, it just feels like I'm out to ride, which I think that's a good thing. Put it on cruise control and ride around for the win, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you got anybody here to thank tonight? Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jim Gilbert, Grandma and Papa, my mom and dad, uh, Counterock Balancing Beads, Apex Cycle, Vortex, uh, Jim's neighbor Joe, um, uh, Grandma and Grandpa Wilson, and everyone else. Ross Racing, and yeah. Right on, there you have it. Give a big round of applause for Boy Deadman. All right, thank you very much, Aaron, down in the winner's circle. Pretty awesome. We still have quite a few races to go here, ladies and gentlemen. So just approached by the uh, president of the uh, Welland County Motorcycle Club, they have a 50-50 uh, draw, of course, which helps the uh, facilities, you know, put on the great racing like this. And we have a winning number here. We probably want to make the person uh, aware before the night's over. So the winning number for $832, not a bad night, uh, 589. Four three six, and where can they find you, Joe? I'll be right down where they bought their ticket. So if you go right down to where you bought your ticket, Joe uh, will meet you down there with an envelope with some money in it. Five eight nine four three six. Did you get your ticket, Brian? I didn't. I missed <laughs> out. <laughs> so maybe we need to uh, call that again in case some people are still scrambling for their ticket, because I know mine's usually in my back pocket, my front pocket, my breast pocket, my wife's pocket. Can never see that. Uh, so yeah, man, we're gonna we're gonna call this out again. So everyone that bought a 50-50, get your ticket out. Number is 589 589-436. 589-436, bucks. That's enough to buy you and me dinner anyway, Todd. Yeah, how do we miss out on that? I didn't know that. <laughs> Somebody's got to come up here and sell us tickets. We can't go down there. So uh, good <laughs> deal. That that. That tells you what kind of crowd we got out here. You're today. not eligible, bro. Come on. <laughs> I didn't see that in my contract. So, no kidding. Uh, You're looking at the fine print. Fantastic racing here tonight. We got the Open Expert Final coming up. We're just giving the track a little bit of a uh, going over, I think we were. Uh, we'll probably get into rider introductions by Aaron shortly. And uh, the night's going great. It's going very smooth. That's awesome. I love that on screen. We've got uh, the five minute countdown for our open expert main event and the qualifying races earlier today, if there are any indication. And that that last uh, expert race uh, was, was epic. So as we go into the open, man, oh man, uh, some predictions. I don't know, Todd, is it worth, uh, is it worth throwing, our, uh, throwing ourselves out there for predictions for uh, D? Uh, open expert. Well, but I'm wondering right now before we predict anything after uh, Donnie Taylor's comments there with him and Doug, is that gonna is that gonna happen again? But uh, wow. it, it's predictions. You know what? I, I want to see Bauer pull one off. And uh, again, Doug Lawrence is going to be happy where with he finished. Uh, Dustin Brown finished third. I'd be happy with that. You'd be happy with that. <laughs> Dustin Brown won't be happy with that. Um, but, but again, you don't count out a guy like Chris Evans, Tyler Seguin. He's got lots of checkered flags here. Amazing. All right, Todd. Well, on that note, I'm off the hook. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going for a commercial break. You don't want to miss the open expert coming up next. Welcome back, race fans, to Welland County Speedway. Todd Valley and Brian Coster up in the booth. Lights are on. We have got the open pro expert race on the line. And now, Todd, the difference between DTX and open, explain that to our race fans. Well, in open, they can race the DTX bikes. And we see almost everybody except Brody Bucket oh, and Dustin Brown. Uh, are on the DTX base machines, and I guess Lenny Monroe, uh, the, the the open, the, the framer. The framer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so Buckin is on the framer. Of course, he won his heat race earlier. Um, so did these other two guys, Brown and Taylor, or sorry, Bauer and Taylor. But uh, yeah, it, it, you have the choice. Um, I'm surprised actually not to see more framers out there, but uh, look at Dougie Lawrence. Is he starting on row two? Wow, that won't, that won't make him happy. Same with Chris Evans on the 15. We have got a stacked deck out here of athletes, I tell you. 
It is going to be amazing racing. Holy cow, Todd Valley. We are uh, having a ball up here. This oval track race, the oldest form of motorcycle racing in North America. We've got a stacked field of riders here. Like you said, just two framers with uh, the 46 of a... Brown, Brown on the one, Bucking on the 46. Yeah. And uh, Lenny Monroe back there on the two. He'll be on a framer as well. I'm curious after watching Pouliot improve by leaps and bounds in that DTX race, does he move up in this race? Yeah, exactly. Pouliot from the back row might be able to make it happen. Now, the framer, that is a full-on custom dirt track, flat track machine, custom built frame. You shove in whatever motor you want. They're a little lower, different foot peg positions. Then we go to the TTX. That is a full motocross production-based motorcycle. Suspension lowered. You know, a, a multi-time champion, Steve Beatty, now has a company called 2-6 Suspension. Doing a lot of the work for these riders. He's done a couple. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> and he, you know, he's now morphed into motocross. And uh, his uh, brother, Doug, also a... Flat Track Canada champion in their own right. Doug missing here tonight. Hopefully we'll see him in a few other rounds. Dougie Lawrence, the 73 on that second row. Chris Evans, a ton of championships. Like you said, over 20 championships here in this class. We've got the number nine of Don Taylor, who's been hot, hot, hot all night on that first row, on that beautiful, stunning blue Yamaha on the outside. Then right up on the inside, it is the 19. And, and that rider has just been awesome all night. That's uh, Brandon Seguin. And now his brother is just over a couple there, the 22 of Tyler Seguin. Those guys have got a, a ton of laps. We got Brown right in between them. They get to go for a, another sight lap here, which is pretty okay by me. And look at the speed of the number one of Brown here on this uh, kind of this hot lap, sight lap, whatever you want to yeah, call it. They're giving them two more. Yeah, but... parade lap. So uh, really hot to trot. It's the number one. So maybe Brown's going to pull something out. Oh, oh. Buckins on the 49 tonight. We're so used to seeing him running the 46. This Bucket on the 49. Won his heat race earlier. Like I said, he's adapted to these play tracks. It's not what he's grown up riding, but... Uh, He's our 2017 Flat Track Canada champion. You don't become a champion unless you learn how to ride every track. And he's uh, he's done that very well. You know, I've uh, this the most utmost respect for these riders. Uh, and uh, you see the speeds are going and the, the close quarters they keep with their competitors. This awesome, great crowd out here. I want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting this event. Flow Racing Network, Fox Sports Racing, a big shout out to them for having the wherewithal to pick up some Canadian homegrown racing. 20 lap final, Brian. Woo it's gonna be a barn burner. 20 laps of absolute mayhem. And the throttles are revving up the lights that they're going, and they're gonna go free. I think Brown's got the whole shot, Brian. That may be bad news for the rest of the crowd. Woo Look at Brown and Todd, the battle for second and third. It's shaping up hardcore Here's right the here. The framers are all up front. The pack is funneling through, battling, and it's a number nine of Don Taylor on the outside on the Yamaha, making that line work again, getting up to the lead. Package. We got the two Here come framers. Buckets. see how it all plays out. He's now closing in on Brown. Is now we're up to the high line. Is he ever caught? He is just going and challenging Brown right now for the lead. Battle for the lead. Bucket and Taylor side by side. Bucket holds Taylor off for now. And we've seen Taylor, especially in turn one on the outside. Here so comes Bauer. Don't count him out yet. Bucket holding on the inside, on that triple. Speed up. Now he drops the, drops the sled down. Bucking Taylor. Holding off Taylor. Taylor is right there. Bauer trying to take it all in back there in third. You can see Bauer moving up the track. Wow. Close 
company up front. Four pack starting to pull away a little bit. The number one oh. crowd. Now, oh, Taylor's getting a little bit antsy there, taking a peek. He doesn't want that front wheel coming in. Look so, at the yeah. front wheel. Oh, oh no. wow. So his defense becomes offense. Three wide. wide. <laughs> this is exciting. Todd coming in. Awesome. Taylor now up the inside of Bucket. Bowers right there as well. How is Taylor doing it? His setup is spot on tonight. He can make moves from everywhere on the track. But I'm liking the pressure from the young guns right in his tailpipe. Bauer was looking his way, trying to make his way around Bucket. Up on the high side, going into three. Taylor, your leader. Bauer trying real hard to get past him. Oh, Bauer and Bucket. They are dueling out with Dustin Brown on that curtain. Beager prepared number one, our defending champion. Coming in, two turn three. Taylor still out front, Bauer isn't going anywhere. Bucking now feeling the heat a little bit from Brown. Brown is uh, eating plenty of roost right now. But Don Taylor just able to make that 450 Yamaha sing. But look at the pressure on the outside. Bauer from young Hunter Bauer. Applauding what I'm seeing from Bauer. He can just hold that line. Bauer now making his move. Oh, Taylor going to hold him off as they exit too. You think Bauer can do the cut under? No, he's going to favor the outside. We saw him on the DTX bike earlier in the day. Making that outside really work for him. He's not quite out in that loose stuff yet, though, Todd. We're going to be in the lap traffic here, Brian. That may mess things up a little bit. Now, this could work for or against Bauer as he is looking high and looking low. Don Taylor, tons of championships and experience, taking a step back from the court, coming back and just showing some dominance throughout this whole evening. Bauer still stalking his prey there as they go into turn three. They put some distance now between Brown and up to third. Dustin Brown's made his way into third, Bucket shuffle back to fourth. Bauer not giving up on this battle for the win. I'm liking the tenacity, Todd, from Bauer. He's right there, side by side, getting a wheel around. Can he do that cut under? Does he have the horsepower? Now he's trying that high line. He's not giving up on that line. I'm surprised he hasn't tried the bottom yet. You can really see Todd that shiny blue groove. And Bauer is just doing everything he can. Now they're gapping Dustin Brown somewhat. Bucket also has fallen back. So now Bauer and Taylor battling for the checkers. Let's see right now. They come through turn four. Coming through the lappers. Fast and Bauer furious. moves down to the inside. Nice. Ryan. He's going to try the inside line. First time there. New leader, Hunter Bauer. Can he hold him back? And that's what you have to do. He's got to make that lap traffic work for him. Wheel to wheel. Elbow oh, to elbow. That heel shoe dragon. I love the way Bauer gets it up. Taylor using that smooth experience. But Bauer just not giving in to the old dog. Bauer still holding the lead as they go into three. We got two laps left, Brian. Two to go. Oh my God! This is this is this is big. This is big for Bauer. Can Bauer hang on to it? Right now, about a bike length now. But we've seen Taylor do miraculous things all over this racetrack. But maybe Bauer has got it figured out finally after 19 laps. Can he just hang on on the groove and hold that line? Taylor's gonna have to really pull something out of his bag of tricks if he wants to pass a young gun. Into turn three and four for the final time. Woohoo! Coming out of turn four. Hunter <laughs> Bauer! Sweet victory! Oh my gosh. Now, Taylor's gotta hold his head up because he already took the win earlier on. Great camaraderie out here. Love to see that from these young guns. There's so much Love great... that nice Oh, trailer. yeah. There was so much action, Todd, on the track, but that battle for the lead was so hot, we couldn't really deviate off it. So no, a lot of great riders and a lot of great action.
did make it to our broadcast, but that race for the lead was so worth it. That was just epic racing. Good on this kid. He came in thinking he was maybe a little under machine there in the DTX, not having all that much confidence that we saw back in 17 when he was the number one plate holder for Honda Canada. And his rider coach in the uh, in America, Ducky Lawrence, going over to congratulate him. Brian, it was about two laps after I said, I'm surprised Bauer hasn't tried that low line yet. And he dropped to the bottom, and, and the next thing you knew, he was past Taylor. Taylor didn't go away. He hung around like that weird uncle on Canada today who doesn't want to leave the barbecue. But did, did, kudos, kudos to Taylor for making a plethora of passes here tonight and not giving up here. It looked like he could have had that win again. The way he made his way to the front was uh, epic. And then for Bauer to rebound and then having all that pressure, you know, from the number one rider, you know, just unreal to have a rider like 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 Dustin Brown in there and then kind of get pulled a little bit towards the end really showed how th how those two really kept uh, the two leaders really kept the pace up we're going down to the podium with Aaron Hesmer and our winners all day and uh, we just was a little bit off on the setup I wish we sticked with our original one but the track was changing so we had to try something Got a long season ahead of you. Uh, do you have anybody here to thank tonight? For sure, uh, Kurt Bigger Racing, Steel Town, Ga or Steel Town Garage, and uh, Performance ATV, Wozner Pistons, Vortex, and just everyone else that helps out the team. It's an amazing effort from all of you. There you go, third place finisher, Dustin Brown, your current Canadian national champion. Second place finisher, almost had it locked down again here tonight. Give a Big round of applause for Don Taylor. Donnie, uh, yeah, you fought it out, and the young gun just had it for you in the last couple laps. I got outkitted on that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it, it was weird. Like, the line changed so much, and, uh, you know, Brody was going out pretty good down at the bottom, so I'm like, I'm going to try that because he was pulling away. You know, and I, I, I didn't feel fast there, but it seemed like it was working, and then I see shadows on the outside, and... It was kind of just like chasing traction, and uh, you know, it's hard leading a race, as anyone knows. Um, I felt like I was going pretty quick, but I kept seeing shadows, and as soon as Hunter got by me, I'm like, oh man, you know, he's running just a little bit of a different line, and it was just kind of a game of kind of chasing lines, and you know, he just had a little bit more than me at the end with whatever he was doing there, so uh, super pumped to see him win. Watch Hunter race since he was on a 50, so uh, I'm old, he's young. <laughs> you have anybody here to thank tonight, Don? Yeah, you know, I just want to thank Jim Sale, uh, Sale Racing, Scott Sale. Um, you know, they've kind of just been keeping me on bikes for years, and they're always kind of willing to work with me showing up and not showing up. So it's kind of fun to be out here again, and uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun tonight. There you have it, your second place finisher, Don Taylor, and your main event winner, give a big round of applause. For the local hometown hero, Showtime Hunter Bauer. Bauer, you're representing Canada racing in the U.S. full time this year on the Nikki Kendall race team. Uh, how did tonight feel for you? Oh, uh, this feels awesome to finally grab a win in the expert. Um, I don't know, man. It, it was something. It was an animal out there. I was trying to find lines, and I saw Don and. Uh, Brody go by and I was trying to chase their lines and just couldn't get them to work. I finally found the line and uh, got it to work and bowed my heart out. You've certainly been racing in the States. They tend to have longer mains. Tonight we had a 20 lap main. Did that certainly help you for this, this race here? Yeah, for sure. It uh, definitely wasn't as hard on the body here as it is there. So that came in to an advantage for sure. Right on. Do you have anybody here to thank tonight? Yeah, I'd like to thank my dad for working his ass off to get the bike ready. I'd like to thank Ninky Kendall Racing, um, Dave Waters Auto Body, and uh, whoever else I forgot, thank you very much, and thanks for the fans for coming out. There you have it, your main event winner. Give a big round of applause for Showtime, Hunter Bauer. So gr great interviews down there, uh, Brian, and... Uh, Listen to Don Taylor saying he got out kitted and uh, he's old and, and Hunter's young. Unfortunately, our monitor is cut off here. I think we were going to show a replay of the pass for the lead, but 
Good on Hunter Bauer. So here we go. Here's uh, Bauer getting by Taylor. Taylor uh, tr trying his best to get back. This was where the old kicks in, I think. Well, that was a great interview with Taylor. All three of those riders put on a great interview. Uh, Flat Track Canada serving up the action here at Welland County Speedway on the on the clay. And uh, we've got lots more coming, but uh, for in now we're going to commercial break and stick with us for the recap and our goodbyes. So Brian Coster, fantastic night of racing here at Welland County Speedway. I, I can't imagine fans at home would be disappointed with that action. Uh, that, that open expert final was amazing. Hunter Bauer, the kid getting it done. It's kind of cool when the guy in second place, Donnie Taylor, many times Canadian champion, it's kind of cool when he said it was cool for him to see Hunter Bauer win the race. Yeah, really good sportsmanship amongst these athletes. I'm telling you, uh, Todd, the racing here tonight, as you fans could see, was just spectacular. And uh, great interviews down there on the podium for our top three. And this is just a small taste for your race fans at home of what's to come here in Canadian flat track as we move into some of the bigger, faster screening tracks at the horse race facilities. And there is a plenty of action to come here in, in Canadian racing, Todd. I I'm pretty stoked for it. And uh, we had a ball working together years ago uh, and now to be back and uh, to see the series going to those big venues and, and the spectatorship grow and the live TV, man, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. And, what a, what a great way to showcase Canadian talent. Yeah, you're right, Brian. And uh, looking forward to working with you a lot more this season. And uh, shout out to Boyd Denman. He had a great night in the intermediate class. And I, and I think uh, that about wraps it up. I think we're back in about two weeks at Humber Stone Speedway. So thanks to uh, Fox Racing Network, Flow Sports Network, and of course, Hills Productions. And uh, thanks for watching Flat Track Canada. See you next time.